Hello, everyone. Welcome to Digital Beast Stream. We're here for the second season of this incredible um, live stream show that uh, it's coming back for after a while. So welcome to everyone who's going to connect. He's connecting now and we'll connect soon. Uh, my name is Gabs. I'm trying to be the best beer communicator I can. And someone saying I'm doing a pretty decent job, which is great to hear. And I'm based in London, in North London, in my case, and I'm always trying to have the best background possible. So please, you can see I got plan, I got neon. So there is all I need to make um, a good impression on you. So welcome to the Digital Beast Stream. Digital Beast Stream is a series of live streams that I'm uh, organizing with um, and a couple of collaborators, especially um, Natasha in these days. And we are trying to, uh, you know, um, understand what is going on in the drinking industry, in the beer industry, but the drinking industry um, especially. And we're trying to asking ourselves some questions about, um, you know, um, especially how the pandemic has impacted all of these different businesses. And we try to speak with as many players out there than possible. Used to be on uh, Instagram before, where now we prefer to see if we can manage to have a bit more like a, uh, a slight, um, you know, trustable um, platform like um, YouTube, Facebook, by via StreamYards, and um, the other ones is going to be. So um, usually it's a half an hour, so I'm not going to take too much time from this introduction. And usually we are having fun and we're discussing, we're drinking something. If he's a drinker producer like the one today, I'm trying to drink something from them as well, like this, which I'm very curious. But we're going to speak about that in a second. And if you want to follow what we're doing in here, as I said, along every single platform where you can find us, please follow us. Um, look at what we're doing. Support us if you can. We are having a couple of projects which I may going to be interested if you are a pub lover. So that's um, that's what I'm you know inviting you to do. So check it out. What's in the glass? Turning the tide and the digital beer stream. That's what we're having today. And you know when we are talking about our industry, uh, yes, it's the beer industry mostly. But a hey, you know there are so many different uh, you know uh, parts that make the industry being fantastic. And one of the reasons because this industry is fantastic is because we tend from the beer industry to uh, you know having. Uh, you know, all our different cousins that are creating beautiful things with different products be part of the same. So um, soda is a beautiful word. It means, uh, in my opinion, something that is colorful, something that is fruity, something that is very easy, approachable, but without compromise with quality, without compromise with creativity, and without compromise with, you know, all the things that are making uh, our drinker life uh, a good life. So uh, I would love to introduce you uh, Square Root Soda, the um, guest for tonight. And we're going to speak with the team in a second. So just let me have him there in the show. We're going to like, oh, we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> we were like, we were like rehearsing in We've the been background. doing this the whole time we in the like, background. You know. That's what it was. I, I wasn't sure if it was my screen or, you know. <laughs> welcome guys welcome square roots so happy to have you here how are you doing guys yeah doing really well so today, today. I, <laughs> I would love to say i, I if, if you don't mind introduce you like i know robin and ed and these two legends from the drinking industry in the drinking scene in london and east london they're here today uh, as i said i'm gonna drink something that you made so in the meantime then i open it to taste it um how are you in these days? Everything fine? I mean, it's definitely a bit spicy. It's not the normal. Um, I don't know about you, but the past year's been a bit odd. Hasn't it? <laughs> There's been, it's been a few changes. Um, you know, in February, uh, in February we were in Munich for a, for a conference, and then we were in Italy for, a, for like a, I went to a big trade fair there. That's where I picked up this glass. The illicit Italian breweries. Pira del Borgo. Uh, and, uh, and then we got back to the UK and then it was just like, uh, yeah, it was a strange one. So it's been, it's been, a, been new, hasn't it? Uh, but we're still positive. That's the important. Hey, you know, again, look, we're here, we're discussing, um, we're drinking beautiful things, we're chatting between, you know, like interested people and, 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 and you know, this is the fun. And 
you know, uh, to cracking on, uh, so we don't lose too much time. Uh, the, the, the main question is always, who are you and what is Square Roots? Do you mind <laughs> to tell us? Sure. So I'm Robin. I'm obviously one of the founders of Square Root. Um, what is Square Root? I mean, it's really hard because we do lots of different stuff. So essentially, we we make fizzy pop. We make it with the same like care and attention and eye for quality that breweries do, um, okay. which is weird in the soda world. Most people like to own a, a brand and like farm out all of the production and all of the like liquid and stuff. And we do absolutely everything in house. We have a the the word for a, a brewery in the soda world is a soda works. So we have a soda works in. Uh, in East London, and literally everything is done there. Fruit comes in, bottles of fizzy pop come out. So you're now telling me that basically you are capable to get the fruit and with the fruit making incredible beverages like this. Is it what happening? Exactly. Yeah. The that fruits that are in that drink, they came from our farmer friends in Sicily. Carmelo and Carmelo, they selected the grapefruit, they shipped them to us, we peeled them, we juiced them, we got, well, so that one that you're drinking is a collaboration with Cloud Water, so we got Cloud Water to send us some hops, uh, we paired it with some green tea, and then it's soda. Why is the dog making so much noise? <laughs> okay, okay. <I'm> just, <laughs> the dog, just bear with me, he's like, that's all right. It's not very- like a lockdown inside video stream, if there isn't like a dog or a cat or a baby in the background doing something, hey. We are inclusive in the show, so please, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's totally fine. Um, let me put it in this way. This is a brilliant drink, and I would love to meet myself since 20 years ago when I started to drink alcoholic, um, unalcoholic, uh, you know, fizzy drinks, like, you know, the most famous ones. And I would love to slap me and saying to myself 20 years ago, that's the fizzy stuff you have to drink, not the one that you used to drink. Um, okay, so the best way to describe square root, as you said, is 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 this colorful uh, uh, description, and 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 the fact that you're always saying, um, you know, I love the handmade in our soda works, and 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 what's happening compared to a brewery into a soda work, like. Uh, what are the tools in, that you're having in, into in, into the, the the place where the magic happened? Sure. So everything from the like tank that we hold the liquid in to the the bottle coming off the line is exactly the same as a brewery. It's a tank. It's got a liquid in. It goes into a bottling machine that fills the bottle, caps it, etc. It's it's the same. The fun stuff for us happens in the production room. So basically, we could be doing anything from washing fruit, grinding it, chopping it, squeezing the juice out, cooking the fruit, like infusing spices into things, working with like sugar syrups to get stuff. That's like our brewing process, basically. Okay, so, right. And, 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 and you know, um, um, you mentioned, we mentioned before, I have strong Italian origins and wherever we think about fizzy drinks there, we do have some like very, very famous drinks. And one is Cedrata. Everyone loves Cedrata, especially if it's the Tassoni one, which is this kind of, you know that, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tassoni is well cool. The little, and the little bottles there, you know, with the bright yellow, green color. They got some, yeah. very, they got some very good behind the scenes videos, actually. I like watching their process yeah. videos. Okay, uh, I didn't know that. The enviable peeling machine. The peeling machine that they have is the one I got my eye on. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. So eventually we're getting that peeling machine. Tassoni knows where it's at when it comes to the, the citron peeling. Because <laughs> that's great with the Diamante citron, right? Which is the, they're like, for anyone out there, like the lemon is obviously like the little, you know, you know the lemon, everyone knows lemons, right? It's the yellow sour one, right? Yeah. The citron is like the big, massive lemon friend, but it has no juice. So it's all about skin and 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 like white, fluffy, almost like marshmallowy texture. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, I've not had a citron for a couple of years now, but they're really cool. Um, well, okay. Well, I, I, you see, this, this is the beauty. Of, this is the beauty of you. Now, now I have memories because <laughs> people people associate so much memories with you know um, what they drink and what they eat and what what you know whatever makes them happy and. 
you know, I, I'm, I'm, I can't be, I can't say I'm a big fan on Iron Brew, uh, kind of the other beverage, you know, because that's a different thing. But in the same time, I'm, I'm very like passionate. I'm very like into, you know, uh, try to understand and, and, and you know, uh, when you say natural, uh, it, 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 you making drinks, right? You call you you say them. Then it's all in a way. There is this kind of naturality and 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 freshness. Is it really hard to achieve this level of production with very good um, fresh products? Like how hard is it, and why not so many people does it in the shall I say soft drinks um, word universe? No. Universe, I like that. It's good. The soft drinks universe. I think a lot of it is. Because no one does it on like our scale, a lot of the equipment didn't really exist to do it. So when we first set up, we borrowed lots of knowledge from like cider makers and from like literally people who do like fresh juice at markets and stuff like that. So we started with really small equipment and just lots of it. And it like it's only now that we're growing to like find bigger equipment to make more. So right. I think it's just, it's really high effort. It is, it's a lot of work to, we literally, a lemon comes in, we wash it, we peel it, we squeeze it, we infuse the lemon rind in a sugar syrup, we then mix all that together. It's a lot of steps to make the product what it is. And I think hmm. most people can't be bothered. Oh but yeah, well, again, definitely, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> the, the challenge comes as well that it, when you apply, if you look, if you're looking at it from a brewing angle, the way, okay, obviously a New England IPA and a stout are very different, right? But mm -hmm. both of them fundamentally involve mashing, boiling, adding hops, cooling it, fermenting it. It's the same process. Yeah. Sure, there's like little bits, you know, more hops, less hops, cold hops, warm hops, whatever. But the way you make lemonade and the way you make ginger beer are fundamentally completely different. And I suppose that is the challenge. We have two sides to our processing we have our citrus side processing and we have everything else, uh, which divides into like your apples, your ginger, your rhubarb, your cucumbers. And then you have things like your berries, which is your black currants, your raspberries, your aronia. And the way you handle all of these ingredients, it's almost, we have to take quite a, I don't know what's the right approach. It's, it's we, had to, we had to think, what are we trying to get in each of the drinks that we're making? Right. And what is the best way to, to deconstruct that fruit that thing into a drink and do that in a scalable and consistent way and that's that that's the crazy thing you know i mean it's it's that's our magic that's what we do so you just you just worry about the drink you get you get the drink and it's nice may may, may i may i may i ask you why you are such a um uh, 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 when you talk like you, you sound like a brewer it is is he is he is he is he because you have like you, you had an experience in 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 a, in a brewer you used to be a brewer right well, I mean, yeah, I was a brewer for a number of years. Um, I, I, I worked initially at Redemption Brewing up in Tottenham. This was right. around the time that Robin was, Robin used to work at the Euston Tap. Um, yeah. so he was, she was selling the craft beer. I was making, it was called microbrewery beer then. <laughs> we hadn't got this newfangled craft thing going on. Um, and then uh, Halloween Hops started up and I, and I, I, joined, I joined the team there and, and became the head brewer um, at the Cock Tavern. And it was around that time, you know, when Howling Hop scaled up that me and Robin, you know, we, uh, we were looking at starting our own business and we were sort of unsure whether it was going to be a brewery that did soft drinks. And we opted in the end. We said, look, soft drinks has got to be a thing, right? No one's doing it yet. People yeah. aren't doing this. Let's just do soft drinks. Um, you had a vision. You had a vision. We had a crazy idea. I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> know if it was a vision. Um, we, we borrowed some money. We bought a bottle filling machine off of five points. Right, nice one. Five points. Um, <laughs> they were then. They sort of were sad that they sold it to us. I think because um, they bought the other one and it wasn't as good for a while before they got the better one. Sure, sure. Um, and then we bought. You know, we 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 built the first pasteurizer. We got a tank made up in Macclesfield and rented a railway arch. I went to the wow. market, bought some glass. And then we didn't have any money left. And we were like, oh, shit, we actually, oh, am I allowed to swear on this? I don't know. Go we're for all, it, go for it. That's fine. Right? Uh, I don't know. It's not the BBC, is it? But, um, you know, we, we, we literally just had to go around selling drinks until we could make more again. It was like, it was, I don't know. We weren't necessarily that solid on the business from <laughs> that point, I feel. Um, we obviously well, look, got since then, I think. But 
I know. Look where, look how far you went in terms of you know you are showing many other businesses that are trying to do similar things or even different one how you can start relying to the communities do we already know and adapt you know your 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 your, your processes in your way in such a way creating your even filling somehow gaps then you said maybe the people didn't even know them were there and now I know if I go in a good beer place or if I go in a good bar if I go in a good restaurant it's very very likely that I can see you know this logo in the fridges and 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 and, and it's a beautiful beautiful thing well done definitely well done if you don't see the logo it's not a good place <laughs> hey you know <laughs> Honestly, Robin, turn that shade dial right down. Just a, just a tad, yeah? Um, I love that I go in just places normally where I can find square root drinks in there. So, hey, you know, again, this is... You have a very... You have a, a, already a few comments in here. And, and there was just a comment before saying... Um, someone wants to know um, where the name square root is coming from. Sorry. Actually, Victoria. Sure. So... If you haven't already got this impression from us, we are just two nerds asking yeah. you to love our soda. Um, yeah, so we both met at UCL when we were at uni um, and we were doing science degrees. So um, yeah, it was, for us, it was a way of connecting like that sort of science background that we had and then okay. also creating the idea. Cause at the time that we did this, it was like a completely radical idea to make soft drinks from fruit because most soft drinks are made from like fruit juice concentrate that's so far removed from what an actual fruit is. So um, the process of making a square root is like making a number smaller. So we were sort okay. of saying we're taking soda, what it's become now and taking it back to what it used to be a long time ago. So making yeah. it smaller and more simplifying. about the fruit and simplifying it. Yeah. Square root, defying it. Square it's root. simple. It, it, you know, it, it, I, I would just, I went very, very far trying to understand if maybe there was something kind of, and you know, like an, 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 an old school drink call in that way, or maybe because there is the root which is squared on some specific fruit, and maybe that's what you prefer. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I mean, that's you know, it does the job. natural square root, making things simpler. Yeah. Hey, you know, square that's beautiful. Soda. Um, you know, it, it it just seemed to fit. You know, it it, it it's it's funny. I I mean, I guess um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the problem is once you print it on a, like a piece of paper and people start calling you or calling right. you by, then you have no choice it anymore. Now. It's done. So like, even if it seemed like a dumb name at the start, like it, it's still sort of stuck, you know, and then actually it's worked out quite well. <laughs> I think, you know, um, hey, I, again, I, I'm so excited because I have a full crate as well to explore, to dig very hard into it. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to do all my photos and all my things, you know, I, that's, that's, that's what I'm going to like. And, <laughs> because I want to make sure that this is not going to be our last chat. We're going to have um, other opportunity, hopefully in the future, to you know go through um, you know all different aspects about your business and and how it, it, it came out and everything. We're living a very strange time, and I'm sure there are lots of people out there that want to hear a bit more um, how, especially Square Root, you know, went through. Um, so far into this beautiful um brand new scenario or not beautiful it depends for some people really is in a way you know i want to be positive i call it new scenario like let's call it that way and you know these are questions asked many times but i i'm always very curious to hear and and, and it's like how has been uh square root business impact uh you know uh, in all of these periods of time Sure. So we're, we're, we were super on trade focused, obviously, like it's both of our backgrounds coming from beer, coming from like bars. Um, so obviously overnight, 95% of our customers closed, which was really shocking. Like I, there was literally nothing I'd ever looked at that would ever prepared us for anything like that happening. But then the, the absolutely amazing upside to that is as the wholesale started to drop off, people really started coming to our website and placing orders on our online store. And that's what's really grown massively for us this year. And um, right. now we're like putting a dedicated team in place to manage it. It's, yeah. it's just become a huge part of what we do. And the best thing about that is just being able to interact directly with people. People send us emails all the time saying like, hey, 
I just want you to know this was great. I bought it from your website. Like, this is good about it. I like this. Someone, uh, a 10 year old emailed us today, or maybe I think it was last night, saying that they, uh, they'd come up with the next best summer flavor for our, um, for our range. They want us to make a watermelon soda. So there you go. <laughs> it's like things like that that really make everything worthwhile. It's, it was wow. super nice to feel like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was amazing that people wanted to support an independent yeah. business and were, and were coming and, and sending that. And I suppose that gave us a new energy because um, we were we were like, what on earth is going on? And it was, it's, it's been a really hard time for the whole team as well, because, I mean, it's yeah. not just it's not just me and Robin. Um, but then, you know, actually, once we started to understand what the new kind of version of the world was <laughs> was like, sorry, I can see a very excited comment there. I mean, maybe. No, Jimmy. Maybe. We tried it. No. <laughs> okay, maybe. I don't know. All right. um, but um, once we sort of started to to get a feeling for for what it was like, I think it's it's cool. It's given us some new like opportunities to do more collabs. I think to yeah. do more small batch stuff. We can now make a limited release and actually get it out there fast yep. in a way that we couldn't do before. And. I I should plug this actually. Oh yeah. We've now we've it's literally given us. I got mine. I got mine as well. <laughs> it's somewhere there, but I'll, I'll find out in a bit. You know, like we actually we, there's some amazing artists in here as well that we commissioned. There's a comic from Dave Bailey. Uh, you of, can't of really various, see well, you'll have to just get your own copy. Um, of, of various beer art fame. We've got but some I think cool what Ed is saying is it's given Peter. us some, uh, some like energy to put behind doing cool stuff like this. So it, like we literally we published our own magazine because. We can ship it because people directly you know, to we people. Can, we can send this to store. you, which is amazing. It's called Fizzy Pop. How cool is it? There's a free tea towel with every, <laughs> you know. I mean, the best part about who it. doesn't want that? Um, but you know, I, so I think it's given us the opportunity to be creative again. Yeah, like I think it's it was terrifying for quite a while. Um, yeah. but then you know, it's I think there's lots of new opportunity, you know, there's lots of cool stuff possible now. So. You no, know, guys, you're always doing good things. I, I just realized that um, you, you release a Black Heart Cola to support, uh, you know, a legendary, legendary venue in Camden. And that's a beautiful thing. And it's doing for good, you know, it's, it's there for good. It's, it's fantastic. Well yeah, it's really awful that the Black Heart's in this situation, but like, it's great because we have the manufacturing that we can, we're literally making up, there's only going to be four cases ever made in the entire world. So there if you go. want, you have to go to the Black Heart's fundraiser and bid for it. It's a money can just about buy prize. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and money, theoretically money, you can't buy that normally, but you can only through supporting the Black Heart. So I suppose this is the good thing about small businesses. Yeah. I would always say that the great thing about all the most small businesses yeah. is that they come with a value added. Yeah, like and there's such, such like a great community around it, and it's really great to see like people rallying around places like the Black Heart. To I'm yeah. just, oh, well, you know, if you if you have a look as well, like how far they managed to go in this very very short period of time, it means that again there is an industry, there is a community which is London in its faster term. And, and it's there, it's there to protect the most beautiful things that we have in here. Otherwise, you know, when we're aching up again and we're going to be able to go out, where are we going to go? I just want to go in yeah. the places where I didn't go before. I want to go to the places where I used to go, plus all the good ones, you know? So um, I, I think this is part of the way that you have adapted your business around, you know, um, this situation. And, 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 you know, like even you mentioned about the staff as well. Like I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, you managed to probably like have someone in flexi furlough, furlough maybe full time. So uh, how was how was in terms of like the, the actual like adaptation of the business itself? Like pretty 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 alright. Yeah. So we when lo the first lockdown hit, we actually had about two hundred thousand bottles in stock, which was part of the shock, I think. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot. We'd made it, we basically, the, just to explain, Square Root was obviously in the railway arch for six years in Hackney. And we had decided that it was going to be an amazing idea to uh, bring Square Root to more people, scale up, build this brand new soda works in Leighton. And, and five times the size of the railway times arch. The, uh, 17 times the capacity, warehouse, all of the amazing stuff. And Big step. It, was, it was crazy. It was insane. It was almost like the first time round. But 
you know, we'd just done that and it was kind of, we'd ironed out the bugs and the kinks and we were ready for summer 2020, right? But we didn't, <laughs> we had like, we'd have got, we'd been like pumping summer out. Summer 2020 was not ready for We'd us. been pumping out stock ready for the spring. And, and so we had this huge full stock holding ready for, ready for the, for the closures. So that was a nice shock, you know, sorry, back to Robin's uh, story. <laughs> yeah, so Berlu came in, so we were Im like immediately able to furlough everybody, which is great, really helped us save everyone's jobs, basically. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, and then, yeah, we didn't really, we didn't have it, it was just me and Ed until July, June, yeah. July. We were going a bit mad because we were basically just roaming around the warehouse, packing online store orders and trying to figure out what was coming and what was next. You know? Yeah. And then we started to bring people back in, started to switch everything back on again. Cool, yeah, well, wow. you know, the, the, room, so <laughs> the, the dog just appeared again. Uh, <laughs> after that, ha we have two dogs, one is just fighting the other for a bone. If you want to bring it on camera, I'll go for it. But you know, like, this is going to be this is going to be a, a no, highlight as well. She's quite big, that so is, I don't know if she's going to go for it. Neto, you want to come in? You need some kind of I don't know if you can get past now. Come on, get, get the, come, come. Okay. especially if we if we're talking about someone that doesn't have a instagram page like dedicated instagram page i don't know if they have it Ooh. oh <laughs> look at that this is Cornetto. Oh. he's, he's oh. like famous now isn't he this is it this guy i right? see a very big character very like you know uh, 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 pride and 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 oh look at that I mean, Fantastic. He, he's a good spokesperson for what I was just going to use coming in as if that's the vibe. So the next question is for you. Are we gonna, <laughs> we're going to ask you now, uh, 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 how can you make plans during this time? And if you do, what kind of plans I am, you know, you think is worth to have in such a very unusual period of time, like the Wisman? So it's obviously like difficult because no one really knows what's going to happen. So we're, we're just really focusing on getting directly to the consumer and um, working with people on stuff like the collabs that we do. Um, and then the other thing that we're focusing on is we want to launch our product into cans. So currently we're bottle only, um, but there's lots of opportunity out there for cans. I mean, like in the immediate things like Deliveroo and Just Eat and stuff like that, they sure. we had a real problem with them because they most of the drivers don't want to accept glass bottles. Yep. Um, I heard. So that was challenging for us. Um, so yeah, we're focusing on uh, on launching cans. Yeah. And I saw there is a. Tell me if I'm saying the right pronunciation. I think it's seed, ours. Cedars. 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 Sorry. Is this the point where we have to say capital at risk before we continue talking? Not <laughs> how it works. I mean, you just said it. Okay, fine. Um, I, I, I see a campaign running, um, or that you just recently started it. Do I say right? Huh? Okay. Yeah, so we're launching a crowdfunding campaign to help funders launch the products into cans. Uh, and yeah, it's on Cedars. Uh, we're going to be raising about three hundred thousand pounds to help us do it. Um, we we've come up with obviously the great tagline of "Own a Slice." Yep. Lots of diamonds uh, running around everywhere. Um, so yeah, you can you can buy a little bit of square root. It's quite exciting, actually. It's and nice help to be us opening. make cans. Yeah. So more that's, info on that soon. No, I mean, you can go. Being, it, no, there's, there's info now. You can go straight to our website, and it's just on the top banner. Just click. You can register, pre-register for the announcement in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's good to hear. Again, you know, um, I started working into the craft beer and be part of the craft beer community. Uh, you know, working in the places where I was able to find your products. So I, I, oh, I, I feel already. I'm, 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 I'm you know, I'm a big part of the very far part of the crew but you know what i'm saying is like uh, have you got any soft drinks in your shop have you got any soft drinks in your bar yeah. soft drinks of course they do have you ever tried it go for it you know it's it, it automatic it's, it's it's classic and would you like to give any advices to other businesses inside outside london um similar uh, you know producers of um you know uh the beautiful beverage that you create or even breweries or wineries, whoever, do you have a good tip to give out there? I would absolutely, I always say that, um, just like reach out to your community for anything, like good, bad support advice, just to like make friends. I think 
it's really when you're running your own business it's really easy to just believe that like you're stuck in it and you're on your own it can really often feel like that but there's there's literally like probably someone next door to you who's in the exact same situation and yeah. i don't think we would have gotten where we are now if it wasn't for the people who have helped us and the people that we know yeah and they never would have helped us if we hadn't asked them to no that's brilliant i've got two simple ones yeah oh I'm scared. scared. They're not as, it's not as good as Robin's because that was actually very, that was very profound. One of them is written on the lemonade bottle, which is keep it simple. Word. Right? That's like the secret motto um, at Square Root, I suppose. That's my, my motto. Uh, and okay. I, the other thing is just stay positive because it's, it's, a, it's a crazy time right now. But I think do what you can to be positive. And, you know, I think if it is about reaching out to people and trying to talk. Um, you know, and I think that's it. It's it's this is a crazy, crazy time that we're living through at the moment, and I, and there will be an end to it. And I think that's what's keeping us going. I think it's that excitement about, you know, there will be some yeah. some interesting stuff to be done still, uh, and we're still here. You know, and you I are doing an, an incredible job. Like even just starting with this, you know, with a with a with a magazine, and and you know, like exploring the word that I did, you know, the, the word of drinks of, of, of you know, it, it's like, sometimes I'm thinking like, I didn't have an iced tea in a very long time. I get a bottle of a grapefruit opt iced tea and I'm thinking like, <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> is there a bottom line? Like, it, it, I think, I think you, you, you can go like completely, you know, uh, uh, limitless. Like there isn't, there isn't a single, you know, limitation in what you can do. You, you can keep going again and again and again. I'm thinking like you did collaboration with breweries, sour beers, uh, you know, uh, shandies. Name something you probably did it or probably is in is in the process. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's the great thing. Is we could literally make anything into a soda. Wow. And Wherever I go, and like we we have the production, so we can just do that. I mean, there are limits. There are. There's a point at which. You, <laughs> There's there's a limit. You know, I didn't say it would be a to... good soda. I said you could make a soda out of anything. <laughs> I didn't say it about any product it would be good. <laughs> well, you know, again, if, if 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 is there a fruit that you hate that you would never want to use it? Could be everything. Just go for it. I, I'm very curious to hear. Tomato. Okay. I don't know. It's We've tried. We've done like a. We did a white tomato. We did a Bloody Mary soda. It was quite um, nice. Right. No. Um, aubergine. That's a fruit. I, I wouldn't want to make an aubergine. No. Soda. No. Soda. I would you, hear, you heard it here first. I try. Yeah. Bit of like yeah. Well, if you, mozzarella. I'm into it. Back at you. If you could make any mm. soft drink, what would you make? Okay. Uh, wow. Um, not I definitely or anything. No, no, this is brilliant. Oh wow. I think I think I loved every time I had something which I didn't expect in my mouth. And it was a mix of things that I don't normally take in them together. Let's say coffee and lemon. Or yeah. or you know, like licorice and strawberry. These are things that I didn't, I, I can't even think about how they will work together. And, and, and that's something that is like, it tickled my interest. And, you know, like, I don't know if it's even possible to do any of that. I mean, they sound good. Anything definitely. is possible. I mean, there's, I can see in the comments, there's been a few suggestions during the call, um, you know, which I'm excited to see. I, I mean, obviously, Elder, that's, that's our, that's that's our, our secret uh, Elderflower supplier. He's is. just added himself there. There he goes. Jonathan. Yeah, got to <laughs> shout out. I can see that Jimmy's also given a rep to the banana soda, but we've already said no. Um, <laughs> no, cannot, please. I, I like the sound of that. That sounds that sounds good. I, I'm, we're big Kinotto fans. There is a pro like getting Kinotto is quite hard. The Kinotto orange because yep. um, Sicily's had some problems with uh, there's a there's a mosaic virus that the that the trees get. So lots I of the bits of orange have died off in Sicily. So they're actually very hard to get hold of. It's something we've been looking for for many years. One. One time, you know, sometime soon. One day. One day we will find the Kinotto. But they're not actually in the Kinotto is from um, northern northern Italy, isn't it? Um anyway, I'm just talking rubbish. It's Roman super Cop interesting. Yeah, yeah. We could we you can do that yourself, pal. You know? <laughs> Don't worry, just just treat yourself. 
<laughs> and, and I'm thinking about as well what you just said. How crucial could be the fermentation? Like you definitely, you definitely don't need to ferment the beverage that you produce. And 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 I'm sure these hasn't been fermented, right? But you could create a, fer a fermented version of it in a way. We did try something before. We did um we did a barrel aged vanilla. We did a bar barrel aged um, cream, cream soda, soda, which was which was a long. Uh, that was quite it was quite early on in Square Root. We did a limited edition. It was for batch five hundred, I think. Wow. No, I think we did it for fun. You it was just maybe just for fun. Okay, fine. That was really cool, right? Um, I mean, I think we definitely want to do more things like that. We did have a project. We've still got some vinegar that's fermenting somewhere. Um, we were going to do our own shrub, so we took it. We we probably one of the worst events. We used to do lots of public events. And one of the worst experiences ever was when we decided to go and do secret garden party. And it was, I mean, it's a, it was a beautiful festival, but it's just that that weekend, it, honestly, from the minute we arrived to literally about 10 seconds after we left, it just rained the entire time. No. By the time that Sunday rolled around, there were about 2000 people still on site. Everyone else had gone home. So we had all this fruit that we brought to make soda with, and it was all going to waste. So yeah, we basically we basically just juiced it all and tried to turn it into vinegar. It's it, we, so there was a we got a broken barrel from the Colonel. Yeah. So it was it was leaking. Uh, it was a Bordeaux wine barrel that they were using for some barrel aged beer, and we okay. stood it up on its side, and we poured all the fruit juice in the top, and it fermented. Um, and it's 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 kind of still like a a slightly weird sherry yeah. right now. Like if you like kind of like a it's like it's got plums and apples in it. Um, I just, I did at the start of lockdown, because obviously mm -hmm. I started making sourdough bread, like every yeah. aspiring East lockdown London. East London I does. So, you know, big up the the, the sort of sourdough starter cultures. Um, <laughs> we we I also tried making some vinegar because Robin bought me the Ottolenghi cook, uh, not, uh, what's it called? Um, Noma. The Noma cookbook, which is okay. very inaccessible. Like it's very hard to get through. But <laughs> if you like looking at pretty pictures of weird bacterial cultures, that's your book. Um, but it inspired me to, to try and vinegar some of the semi vinegar that we made. So I did actually manage to successfully make some vinegar, but like any aspiring home brewer at the point, so it's th I'm three weeks in here, we've got like a bubble, like, you know, like the, the goldfish air stone yep. things. Yep. Got myself a little stainless steel thingy for doing the, like you use for your home brew. Got it hooked up to a little air, air pump and it's been going for three weeks. It's tasting like vinegar, been fighting off the fruit flies. I went and knocked the whole thing over and spilt my, you know, my micro batch, like one liter of vinegar that I've been brewing all over the kitchen. And it took two weeks for because me Because it's not liquid, it's, it's very like syrupy in a way, right? And yeah. it smells of vinegar and it was over the entire kitchen because it just went everywhere. And then that's the reason that I appreciate having a slot drain at work because if you, if you spill anything on the floor, it all just flows away and it's gone. So, you know, <laughs> Well, you know, I, I see already square root. You see in the way that you are telling me bits and pieces going potentially in every sort of direction, even for more gastronomic creations or even still like different type of drinks. So I would love to see one day uh, your twist on balsamic vinegar rather than maybe your twist on beverage that don't even exist yet. Like, hey, again, a grapefruit up iced tea. I think that was pretty hard to think about. So already, <laughs> you know, and that was, that was brilliant. Yeah, and, and I think I'm gonna get more. And 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 I'm usually closing not because I want to, because I have a lot of fun speaking with you today, but because I, I promise I wasn't going to go too far from the 40 <laughs> minutes chat. So the main question is very simple: is like, how do you see? the future of, you know, the drinking hospitality uh, industries in the short term, because the long term is a bit too far, probably. But what about the short term? Oh, it's a hard question. I think the short term is going to be a continuation of the like the, the experience at home, virtual yeah. experiences, shared experiences, DIY. I mean, you, you would just look on the other tab of here. <laughs> What were you looking at? I was looking at Hawksmore at home, which I look go. at. I swear I look at it like once a month and I'm like, can I afford this? And then we check <laughs> the next month and we, but seriously, I think, I think there's going to be a lot of, and a lot of producers, a lot of people are trying out new concepts. Yeah. So there's going to be lots of innovation. 
there's going to be lots of like personalization. I mean, look, we, like I said before, we wrote a magazine, right? Because now we have a reason to have a magazine, whereas we didn't necessarily yeah. think we would, or it, maybe it's accelerated the need for a magazine in a way that we wouldn't have had time for before. Yeah. So I think oh, in the short term, we're going to see a lot of, a lot of these amazing businesses that have suffered during the pandemic, but love people finding new ways to engage with their people, you know, and, and, and you know, that's my call. What have you got? Have you got one or is it? I mean, no, I think that that is sensible. I mean, more and more people are doing those like kits at home and stuff. I think yeah. it's more. I, I think there are going to be lots of digital events, lots of digital festival, lots of the, the life that we always had, you know, offline for, 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 for all the reasons that we know, are going to slightly jump a bit more online. And there are, getting more and more you know platforms and and and, and op opportunities and possibilities out there to reach different part of the markets man, or different type of communities which probably before uh, did they even know that you were there so guys can you imagine like if you really start to become you know uh, interesting for uh, maybe like um, not drinking alcohol communities that maybe don't know you yet just because you've been more maybe associated more to somehow alcohol beverages that would be interesting yeah definitely <clears throat> yeah so okay that's 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 super cool i'm really even more curious to come to see your 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 <laughs> place one day because i really want to see where the magic happened and i since the chorlton uh you know um, um um collaboration i start to love you so much so thank you for that if I ever thank you before, and what is the next? What's the next? You know, a uh, 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 like drink that you're gonna launch in 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 in, in the next weeks. If we can say, it, tell me, even even if you can't say what, just just a slightly small. We have a, a special edition of our lemonade coming out. That's a top secret, but that'll be that's gonna be out in a couple of weeks. Um, and then I'm also working on where our soda works is. There's an alcohol-free brewery called Nirvana. Uh, and we were also working on a collab with them, which is going to be, if you like Schaffenhofer, it's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, you say yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can have a, I can have a box of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we got you covered. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, ex I'm excited. There's some cool stuff coming this year. We've, yeah. got, we've got a big rotor of, of uh, interesting releases. I think more than more than the year before, like more than 2019, 2020. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be jam packed. I I can't wait, and I take uh, I take all we did so far as a, a beautiful meeting after a very long time. I managed to meet you, even if you're just online for now. And uh, thank you very much for spending this. Uh, 40 minutes this evening with me today. I love you so much. This I love so much this talk. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. us. Yeah. And, and um, thanks to everyone in the comments as well for all their positive words. There's loads of people, little shout outs from people we know. Yeah. Thank you, nice. guys. Thanks for everyone who watch. And if you don't know Square Roots, um, <laughs> this is what they produce and this is banging stuff. So thank you very much again. And I wish everyone a beautiful evening, rest of the evening. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. See Bye. you. Bye. <laughs>